Welcome to this video for round four of the Zurich Chess Challenge. I'm actually asking myself every time I'm announcing that why it is called the Chess Challenge. Well, <laughs> let's go, go to the games. Round four. First game I'm going to look at is Gelfand against Holland. The two contenders of the 2012 World Championship match and they both have a real bad tournament. Certainly um, hoping to get a win here. Let's see what happened. We have a Slav defense and uh, in fact we get um, exactly the same position as yesterday in the game Karwana against Arnand. Vichy has got two blacks in a row and we had exactly the same yesterday after g4 bishop g6 Karwana captured on d5 after which Arnand played knight takes d5 and we had a complicated game where it looked like white maybe had a little something but um, also Arnand um, had his chances and at the end um, played a draw Gelfand is playing differently, plays knight to h4. This is quite similar to knight e5 in the, <clears throat> the same idea to take on g6, getting the bishops. In general, white's play in this um, slow slav, as it called, with e3, this kind of line, is very often geared towards um, the bishop pair. The bishop on g6 here in this case is outside of the pawn chain and white will take it at some point and then try to prove that his two bishops account for something. Black's um, compensation is the absolute yeah, solidity of his position. He's got a um, yeah, very rock solid position in the center. We see that after a couple of moves, which look quite normal, yeah, a5. I think this is a good idea, Arnand's uh, move here. It uh, tries to push the a pawn up the board. And this is in a way asking white, well, where are you going to put your king? After h3 and g4, it's quite clear that white won't castle short anymore. It's not totally out of the question, but very unlikely with g4 being played. And yeah, well, if that's not possible, where do you go? Keeping it in the center is um, tricky. And if you cast along, there's the a, the a pawn to worry about. We see that after this, white took on d5. If he um, plays um, yeah, an innocent looking move like, uh, let's say, bishop d3, there's this pawn hanging. So it's not so easy at the moment to develop here. If you play a move like that, you also have to reckon with a4 again. The trick is that after this capture, black Check. takes and then takes on c4. And any capture on c4 leads to b5, which um, in turn gets white into big trouble. The king on d2 is also very uh, unhealthy. <laughs> a4 is a good uh, way to gain counterplay. I think Gelfand's solution is not bad at all. He took on d5 and played f3. This is a bit slow, but it um, controls important squares and pawns. It secures g4 so that black cannot take it, and it secures the e4 square, which is very important. Black's knight was always longing to get to the square, and with f3 that's not possible anymore. Yeah, a4. This was planned all along. What happens if white now takes on a4? Always need to check that. It's um, answered by rook a4, and white will, <laughs> yeah, white will really suffer here. Have a look at this. Check. Losing instantly. You cannot take that. So queen c2 back, the only move. And now a3. And this is. Um, a very nice plan this a pawn push now this a3 pawn will always be near the white king after long castles we see that white castled long where else to go you needed to castle long 
there's not uh, much else. And here, this pawn is a constant worry for white. In even in the deep end game, this can be a problem, like the queen appearing near the king, checkmate on b2. Yeah? This is very far away, but it's something to um, to take into account. If uh, some pieces, uh, not the queens, if some pieces are exchanged, like some some minor pieces, the rooks, then um, this pawn can be a real problem for white, and um, it will be um, the cornerstone of black's counterplay all the time. And I'm not saying white is worse, it's just a very important feature of the position, this pawn. He castled short, and now king b1, hard to do without this move in the long run. Rook c8, yeah, obviously trying to play c5 if possible, opening up the c-file. White played h4, this makes uh, lots of sense. You need to get some play on the king side. And um, after knight b6, which um, yeah prepares also um, a retreat square if possible. After knight b6, now Gelfand played g5. And I have a suggestion here, which I think is interesting. Instead of g5, he also could have played h5. And this, uh, yeah, this looks interesting to me. It's a very typical motif. You see that after g5, Arnold played knight h5, blocking the king side. And if you go after knight b6, h5 first, after the capture, you go g5. And now there is no h5 square. The black knight needs to retreat now to h7 or d7. Let's say he goes to d7. Then white can think of two moves. He can take on h5, which looks very dangerous at the first at first sight, opening the h file. You need to reckon with g6 though. It's not clear that um, this is uh, leading to something decisive. Something like that might be okay for black. But there also is h5 takes g5, knight e7. There also is the move g6, which I find interesting. This is just preventing g6 by black. And it leads to an opening of the position on the light squares, which is very desirable for white, as he's got the light squared bishop. And the light squared bishop of black is already gone for a couple of moves. So initiating play on the light squares is very logical from a positional point of view. And I think white has some dangerous play here. It, it, it's not like winning, but, uh, but um, interesting. Um, knight f8 is a suggestion. The intention is after rook takes h5 to take with the pawn and at least have a pawn like this. And now black can continue. Not, not quite sure how. Queen f7 maybe or... I don't know. I mean, I think white has some dangerous play. He's got bishop b3 attacking g6 or bishop h3 if he wants. Both is interesting. And uh, well, it's just a pawn at the moment. I think h5 was an interesting alternative. Gelfand's move is not, uh, not terrible or anything, but I think h5 was maybe a bit more dangerous for black. Went to h5 and now bishop um, h3. Yeah, the bishop is uh, certainly nicely positioned there. Rook back to e8. And rook e1. Yeah, e4 is certainly one idea. And black centralizes and prepares for any central play. Bishop g4. Yeah, intending to maybe capture and play g6. So um, black is reacting. He plays queen to d6. Now after the capture... Here, g6 is not a problem anymore as the queen can take. Yeah, white, of course, didn't didn't take on h5. Um, he played knight e2, which is, um, I think, okay. Um, there also was e4. Um, I think also an interesting try. And it um, it's also quite, quite principled, this move. You have played f3 and e4. It would be nice to get this working. The thing is, black will take, and um, yeah, probably you need to play knight takes. A move like pawn takes can really be simply answered by queen takes d4, and white has no 
particular um, trick available here. But um, sorry, e4 takes, knight takes, knight takes is interesting. It uh, forces Black's reply. He needs to play queen f8 now. This is the only move. Where else would you go to cover this uh, this bishop? You need to go here, which is not the end of the world. To go back to f8, and now can, now White has uh, more than one interesting try. One is Knight c5, attacking b7, and at the moment attacking b4. And um, yeah, this is interesting. Very unclear position. Black has this somewhat offside knight here, which um, really makes White's play interesting. From a structural point of view, White is not in great shape with this isolated pawn, but he's got um, dynamic ideas. So e4 was, was interesting, it's not bad at all. He played knight e2, not, not bad, like took. And now back to d7, the knight on b6 wasn't doing so much anyway. So he gets it back and maybe to f8 or prepare f5. Yeah, Gelfand's next move, um, is knight to f4. Not sure that I like that too much, but um, it's it's probably not uh, leading to any um, any instant trouble. I, I I really don't like that um, he exchanges this uh, somewhat somewhat clumsy looking knight. But um, yeah, it's not so easy to suggest uh, alternatives. It could have played some slow moves like let's say knight c1 to d3, not to d2, <laughs> knight uh, c1 to, to d3 maybe. This kind of slow, um, slow moves. Maybe even knight d3, f4, knight e5. Yeah, maybe a maneuvering uh, type of approach. Yeah. Well, knight f4 isn't necessarily bad, uh, just uh, don't like it. Don't like it so much. After the capture, White is threatening to play f5. This is certainly what he, what he had seen, and uh, Arnold just prevents this by by drastic means by playing f5, which is okay. Takes, knight takes, and now um, Gelfand played rook e5. This was the idea behind knight f4 to establish a strong point on e5, and uh, this way activate the rook here. But, um, now Anna doesn't have much choice. Uh, up to this point I think the game is uh, quite quite logical. He took here, recaptured and uh, rook takes e5. Yeah, maybe here Gelfand should have gone for d takes e5. It's very difficult to assess, I must say. I invested a bit of time to try to uh, to evaluate that, but I'm not sure if um, F takes E really is a mistake. It, it's it's possible. He took with the F pawn. Maybe he should have done that. It's um, it's uh, maybe this is better. It's obviously very sharp with those four advanced pawns. But um, yeah, maybe he should have done that after a move like Queen E seven, um, just to show a possible line. Let's say uh, Queen F two, covering the pawn. Rook F eight. Rook f1. Yeah, white is um, intending to, to push on the king side while black might play a move like c5, intending c4 with its own attack. This is very, very sharp, this position, and I'm not really sure how to evaluate it. It seems, um, let's say, unclear to me. <laughs> I know, uh, unclear is a bit of uh, yeah, like chickening out, not really committing to an evaluation, but my um, analysis time is limited. I really think it's, uh, it's it's terribly complicated and can go either way. In the game, I think, after the F-pawn capture, um, yeah, I think Arnold is slightly better, really. He played queen e7, and um, here it's interesting to play queen e6 as well, just immediately um, attacking the pawn. This also seems quite comfortable for black. It's just uh, the simple fact that any queen move like queen e6 or queen e7 is, is winning a tempo on the pawns. You cannot really give up one of them. And after the, the cover of the pawns, he plays rook f8 and now is on the only open file. And this counts for something. 
And remember what I said when he pushed the pawn to a3? Imagine a position where some pieces are traded and at the end we have heavy pieces on the board. This pawn is super annoying. If the queen is entering the position, this king <laughs> will suffer against this uh, or due to this, due to this pawn. And we, we really quickly see uh, that um, white is, um, is struggling here. He played h5. Probably uh, also there was time trouble involved. I'm not quite sure the clock times here seem very inaccurate. Queen f7, a good move. Trying to enter with the queen. And if the queen and rook enter white's position, it will get hairy for this king due to the pawn. He played h6. And it seems that this... Um, yeah, not... It's not the... <laughs> It's uh, it's very tricky now. Queen f3, the queen enters. And um, here, maybe here, he should have tried h7 to try to muddy the waters. Check. First this move and then rook e1. This is maybe somewhat better than what he played, but black is certainly better here. He can also just take. The white can try e6. But this is all, all very fishy now. This is what he played, and this after the capture is just um, just worse in comparison. Black now has a healthy pawn here, and white cannot take on h6 at all. Yeah, after this, it's queen d3, Check. and this is already a mate, and exactly what I was talking about. Look at this, the pawn here. Ah, oh, come on, here, <laughs> and uh, white is absolutely defenseless here. It's it's a mate coming. So he cannot take on h6. He played uh, e6, rook e8, g5, check, and the check. Yeah, and here Gelfand already resigned. It was very surprising to me how quickly the position fell apart. I think um, it, it really seems like he, he must have taken with the d-pawn. This um, already looks very, very tricky. Maybe... Um, there is some improvement here, but uh, I really didn't didn't see it. It seems difficult um, to find anything that um, is is giving up the h pawn. How um, how would you try make a sacrifice out of that? It's um, it's just uh, just difficult. Maybe really d takes e five was the the way to go with a very complicated and unclear position. Yeah, an important win for, for Vichy. He had a very bad start with two losses. And Gelfand's tournament wasn't uh, exactly great before, but now it's really rotten. He lost two games, two draws, and um, it's not looking good. Okay, let's go to the next game. What is the next game? Okay, let's go with... Yeah, they're both good. <laughs> I, am, I don't have any any particular order here. I just uh, take the order as it listed on the official site. Carlsen against Caruana, the world champion against um, the young Italian player. Carlsen been um, very... Yeah, he was lucky, really, against Nakamura, escaping from a really really lost position but um, it's not yeah yeah you you have to earn the points anyway even if you are lost so um let's see what happened in this game if Carson is scoring a lucky win again or if he's scoring a deserved win or even loses a game eh? losing a game would be interesting as well he hasn't lost a classical time control game in uh, in uh, almost, I don't know, nine months, somewhere in the summer, he lost the last game. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> the Berlin defense, yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if for just one tournament they would ban this opening? Yeah, it would be nice <laughs> to see more. Yeah, some other openings, yeah, maybe a Sicilian <laughs> here and there. But okay, the Berlin is really a good opening. What can you do? Carlsen is playing d3, not going for the endgame. And after bishop c5, exchanging on c6. So it's um, the exact same line that um, Arnold played against uh, Nakamura. And he lost later. 
and I didn't really like the line and <laughs> I still I still don't think that uh, this um, should trouble black too much let's see what happens it's a very very simple chess h3 yeah this pin is prevented knight d7 yeah this is a move that maybe needs some explanation it's um, not apparent why black would um, move the knight again but in fact this um, is the start of a very typical maneuver black very often wants a knight on d4 or a knight influencing the d4 square so the knight on f6 is not really well placed in that respect and what it wants to do is reposition itself to e6 knight d7 f8 e6 this is one idea or sometimes in comparable positions you um, sometimes play knight b8 even pawn to c5 and knight to c6 yeah, this is a bit wrong what I painted there but um, you get the idea the knight wants to go via b8 or f8 to e6 or c6 to gain influence on the d4 square it's also a matter of look at the worst piece the knight on f6 is just not doing anything it looks at this square this square this square it's just not doing anything so this makes some sense bishop e3 yeah black does not want to take here because the half open f file might give white a little something he just retreated to d6 which also fits to the general idea to play c5 and regroup the knight to whatever square we see that in the game knight c3 c5 castles and now he's playing the mentioned regrouping all in all it's um, hard to believe that white should get something here knight d2 knight g6 well knight e6 seemed more logical to me but this is not a bad move it um, it just acknowledges the fact that white's only the real pawn break is f4 and um, well why not put it on g6 knight e6 was also possible but it blocks the bishop he obviously intended to develop the bishop and now knight e2 yeah this insists on playing f4 as mentioned being the only pawn break and um, after queen d7 check takes and f4 we see exactly this pawn break played. Yeah, black took. Yeah, of course, you cannot allow f5. Takes and takes and rook takes and draw agreed. No, they didn't agree to a draw. It looks very dull, this position. At first, I thought I looked at um, exactly this position right when I uh, returned home today. And um, I was thinking, wow, this is uh, really nothing. But um, yeah, look at the game. It's, uh, it looks like nothing, but uh, in fact, there are some interesting points in this position. Yeah, what, what is Black's idea? What would Black like to do? The only thing that um, prevents this position from being totally equal is that uh, White has this pawn on e4. Black would like to challenge the pawn at best with d5. And to exchange d pawn against e pawn this would be nice it would also be nice to exchange f pawn against e pawn but this is not so easy to accomplish he wants to really play d5 and this is where caruana played b6 and um yeah i'm not sure maybe this already gives white a little something it's um it's amazing an alternative would have been to um, to just slowly first um, prepare short castles. This is the other issue. Where is uh, Black's king uh, going to go? Castle short, castle long. If you castle short, one problem is that queen h5 and rook h4, these kind of ideas, can get tricky. Also bishop d2 to c3 and um, I don't know, short castles looks a bit shaky. And um, yeah, maybe you want to castle long. But if you want to castle long, how do you prepare d5 with c5 hanging? Well, he played b6, queen h5, good move. And now d5, playing exactly what he had intended. And it seems that 
white um, gains something here by means of d4. This is what Carlsen played. And now we're already in a position where black has to solve some problems. It's not uh, the end of the world or a big trouble or anything, but it's already a position with some tension in it. I think um, right here black only has one move really. He needs to, to push. What, uh, what else is there? Yeah, and now we see that um, this bishop on e3, which at the moment is not looking too great, might be um, a real force to reckon with later, simply because in this pawn configuration the dark squares have been weakened. If you um, just imagine this, this bishop on f2, g3, queen on e5, and if the king goes to the queen side, no, you know, this bishop is um, has been improved considerably over the last couple of moves as the dark squares have been weakened. And this is also the reason why Carlsen now is not playing e5, which is the constant choice of uh, computer engines. I had uh, checked this with Houdini and also uh, if you... If you look at uh, the default ICC engineer Stockfish, they all want to play e5. And um, yeah, I understand it gains space, Yeah, f7 is somewhat weak, you might have chances to play on the king side, but it makes this bishop really a bit of a stupid piece. Yes, I know, white can try to activate it like this, but it's still somewhat blocked by the e5 pawn. And this is why I think Carlsen has not played e5, he played b3, trying to open up the position more and uh, at the end emphasize the strength of the bishop. Karana played queen c6 here. And this might already get him into trouble. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite, quite cunning that, uh, that those normal moves um, tend to get tricky. The comp wants to play rook c8, but this is a very difficult move for a human to play. As you simply saying, okay, my king, well, I'm staying in the center. What what, what are you doing about it? Um, maybe black can castle short anyway in the near future, but this is a move that um, is difficult for a human to do. I'll, I'll show you why queen c6 seems to be tricky to better understand what, uh, what the issue is. Carlsen just played rook f1 and threatened to take on f7. So black only has one move. He needs to castle long. This is what he did. And now Carlsen, yeah, he just took on c4. Black must take with the queen, of course. Okay, this is very simple. Yeah, and now he just sacrificed the exchange. Bishop takes, rook takes. And at first, you might think, okay, yeah, well, the exchange, what's the problem? The problem is that white has very strong threats already, and um, black needs to attend to that. If he grabs pawns, let's say here, yeah, just for example, there is bishop f4. And as I mentioned, this is just a force. Black um, has... <laughs> This move to reckon with, there's absolutely no defense. I mean, besides bishop f4, the check, check. is also winning, if you look at this. Check. This is a bit too much. Black has absolutely no defense here. And uh, the same thing happens after queen, queen to a2 or almost any other move for black let's say black retreats to c6 there is uh, also a simple capture here what Caruana played is the best move he played rook d7 yeah now Carlsen took it and took the d5 pawn and um, we, we are getting to a position where white at the moment has two pawns for the exchange but uh, the main point, of course, is this king. It's just very, very tricky to play this position. The king is permanently weak, a permanent problem. And um, in addition, white has a very dangerous d-pawn. The combination of the 
bad king and the d pawn makes this position absolutely uh, murderous to handle. He played um, g6 now, Carolina. And this seems like a, um, a good defense. He couldn't, for example, take on c2. Yeah, Queen g4 Check. is uh, winning here, really winning instantly. The the thing is, um, where should Black go? If he goes here, check. starting with some check. easy stuff, the d pawn is decisive. You can just check. give checks, and at the end push the pawn home. No way to defend against that. If Black after the check um, goes back here, you just take on g7 and win. Yeah, Rook f8. Check. Something like that. Check. Check. It's just a disaster. Black really um, has very little um, choice. G6 is a good defense. Check. Queen G4 check. And uh, King over to C7. What else? Queen E6. Yeah, I'm intending to get this bishop in and also intending d6 check winning the queen and queen e5 yeah that's uh, really a number of threats black uh, only has this move king b7 and he played it in this position maybe carlson um, could have played um, a better move he played um, check queen e7 check which keeps an advantage and um, still poses lots of problems there also was queen f6 which is maybe even better it um, has the following idea if um, black black plays a normal looking move like rook c8 you just push the d pawn and um, yeah you need to move the rook right Not necessarily. There's also this one. But here, white can play check. queen e7 check. King moves and again d6. And uh, it's very tricky for black. White's king is really safe. Black only has a single check on e1 and, uh, and that's it. And what is black exactly doing against the further pawn push? Note that um, it's, it's also possible um, the right circumstance to just play bishop g5. Yeah, let's say black just plays a nothing move. I mean, it's, it's hard to do so. <laughs> Playing a nothing move. But uh, then this and bishop g5 will promote the pawn. Check. Yeah, this was played. It's not a bad move. Maybe queen f6 was even better. But um, here, black's defense is uh, not, not easy at all still. Queen e4 intending possible d6 check and um, Kirana played uh, queen d7 d6 check. check and king a6 all this is uh, all these are only moves and now bishop f4 keeping this important pawn rook c8 yeah the rook needs to get out of h8 get into the game King h2 and um, rook c4. All this seems uh, completely, completely logical. Here, um, white had had alternatives. He played um, bishop to g3, which seems fine. He also could have played uh, queen e7 here. This is what I what I analyzed. It looks, um, or let's say, queen e2, b5. Queen e7 is a bit more precise. The idea being that black is now forced to trade. This is, this was my idea. Thought that at first I thought white is just winning, but um, that's not the case. Black has the the funny defense uh, rook g8. He needs to get um, get to g8 to avoid bishop b8 winning. Yeah, and now white plays something like bishop b6, and it looks really good for white. But note that black's king will go to d7, and then it's not an automatic win. The pawns do not promote itself. White is the only one playing for a win, of course, but it's not clear that he really is winning. 
So um, this was not so um, so great. Bishop g3 seems better. It's a good waiting move, a slight improving move. And now rook c8 was played. He just uh, retreated. Um, this is, I think, a mistake, to be honest. It seems that b5 was, was a better defense. This is very sim similar to what I just showed. If white goes queen e7, we actually have a, um, yeah, a different move order leading to the same position, basically, the bishop being on g3 instead of f4. And um, if queen e7 is not winning outright, and I don't think it is, then this is um, the better defense. White has all kinds of ideas to, to keep the pressure on with little moves, like, like a3, for example. This is not doing much, but what exactly is black's move now? He is um, constantly defending against the d-pawn and the threats against the king. Um, still, this is uh, much tougher than what happens in the game. After he retreated the rook, white had check. this check. And this was the problem. What is black supposed to do now? You cannot play queen b5 as... Um, isn't d7 winning? A d7 does rook d8, yeah. Um, no, it's this move. Yeah, it's this move. I'm sorry, I screwed up my own <laughs> my own annotation here. This is much better to to uh, to play d7 next, and black cannot prevent it. You can take here, and white has a triple pawn. But uh, well, <laughs> one of those d pawns is enough. The d6 pawn, white will promote. So this move is not possible even. And uh, what about b5? Yeah, this runs into a4. Not a very, very nice position. Black essentially only has one move. He needs to go back. And now white has the c-pawn involved. And this is now, yeah, I think black is black is lost here. I don't think there is a defense. With the c-pawn in the game, it's too much. This is excellently protected. And you get the c-pawn in the attack. You get the a-pawn into the attack. Queen c6. And queen b3 and Carlson is playing this absolutely precisely. If black takes here d7 and an overload of the queen, take here. Check. White of course promotes with a check and has an extra bishop in the end. Black cannot take, and this is the the constant problem. White can just push even the a pawn. Yeah just uh, pushing ahead of course black cannot take it look at this for example <clears throat> check and it's a disaster <laughs> those pawns <clears throat> really really um yeah completely bulldoze black <clears throat> yeah a5 played king to b7 and now c5 yeah, pushing everything forward. Here, <clears throat> also d5 was winning. But um, what, what he played is completely sufficient. c5, king c8, takes, takes. And here, here's another very important position where Carson shows that um, he's just an excellent um, calculator. It's, um, you could, if you don't calculate precisely, you could say, okay, let's take this pawn. I'll win that. And uh, maybe you do, but um, he just played it uh, even more forcefully. Played d5. Black only has one move. Queen takes. And now he played queen a4. And this is just deadly. It, it threatens d7 check. It threatens um, queen a8. Queen g4, it's a terrible crossfire. And black is defenseless. He played rook e3. Check. A check. Check. This, this is all forced. Check. And now the d pawn Check. gets involved. Rook e7. And now the simple but nice finishing finishing touch. Queen c8. Check. check. Uh, and here Caruana resigned after queen takes, of course. White um, check at the end emerges with an extra bishop. 
yeah, what can you what can you say? It's just an excellent game. Carlson maybe made maybe a slight inaccuracy with this with uh, queen. Where is it? Queen somewhere. Check. Queen e7 check. Maybe queen f6 was stronger, but <laughs> we are talking about uh, very small nuances here. I'm really amazed that out of this, uh, frankly speaking, completely dull position, he, he got this this uh, great play. And um, I really don't understand how it happened. It's uh, it's it's quite uh, it's quite amazing. Maybe um, Caruana here really should have played differently with f6 and short castle. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's amazing. Around here, very quickly, he has some problems. I mean, it's it's already tricky to play, and uh, somehow it seems it shouldn't be, but um, it happens sometimes. Cards really managed to to get uh, get excellent play out of deceptively uh, simple and 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 harmless looking positions. It's uh, it's 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 amazing. Yeah, with this win, he's on three and a half points out of four. Of course, the SS Nakamura game, I know, but uh, what what can you say about the three thousand one hundred something performance? Just um, an amazing result in the final round um, which is going to be played tomorrow if i'm not mistaken he will face um, ex-world champion vichy arnand and let's see what um, carson is doing he's got the black pieces though not not easy to to do something especially if um, arnand is not uh, playing for for anything big you you know you don't know maybe arnand is uh, really trying hard to 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 get a win and somehow make this tournament uh, result bearable. I don't know. All right, but there's still one game left and it was an interesting game, Aronian against Nakamura. They really play very interesting chess in this tournament. There's there's um, very little, um, there, there are very few games with, uh, with little content. I don't think uh, there was a really dull game, maybe one game, but uh, Otherwise, very interesting chess. Okay, let's um, let's start. We have uh, knight f3, and Nakamura is playing the king's Indian. Very fighting choice, and Aronian opting for the for the um, Fianchetto variation. Here, of course, Nakamura still had the chance to play um, a Grunfeld, but but he didn't. He obviously had um, prepared the king's Indian and. Uh, and stuck stuck to this uh, preparation a6 the the pano variation h3 yeah one of the main lines white can also play um immediate e4 b3 there are many lines h3 looks a bit mysterious at uh, first sight maybe but um, the idea is that after um, a later e4 you want to prevent bishop g4 from happening if you Look at this just for this is an okay move, but just um, to show the general idea if this bishop is exchanged against the knight, then black might get uh, play against the d4 pawn. d4 is the sensitive spot in the king's Indian for white. He has pushed all three center pawns, and it's very important to keep a good control over d4. And um, h3 is a move designed to improve long-term control over d4. It's um, not easy um, to grasp um, concept maybe, but it's very typical for the King's Indian Fianchetto. Just a coincidence, I had <laughs> exactly the same thing today in a tournament game that maybe I'm going to show in a couple of days if I have the time, because it was an interesting game. Okay, rook b8 played. This is, of course, one idea of a6, knight c6, clear b8 for the rook and prepare b5 as a counterplay. This um, b5 idea gains in strength after white has fianchettoed. b5 is um, rarely a good idea to prepare if uh, white has played a classical setup with e4, bishop e2, but in the fianchetto b5 is very often a feasible idea. e4, b5, and here, um, Aronia plays an interesting move that I didn't know really. He played d5. 
I um, only have superficial knowledge um, of the exchange of the Fianchetto variation. A while ago, when um, Boris Avruk, the Israeli top um, grandmaster, released his D4 repertoire series, I started to study the Fianchetto King's Indian. He had analyzed it deeply in the book and it really impressed me. I liked the positions and I thought, well, let's study this opening. To be honest, I completely forgot everything that I looked at there uh, in the book. And um, yeah, here there are other possibilities like e5 or or taking. Yeah, everything's possible. This is a rare move, but a move that, um, as I have checked in the database, has gained some popularity recently. It um, intends after b4. This makes sense. Black can also play knight a5. It's not a terrible move. But after b4, knight e2, black now plays knight a5. Where else to go? Attacking c4. White intends to play knight d4 and maybe exert some influence over the c6 square. At the moment, of course, e4 hangs and c4 hangs. So white's move is quite logical. It covers both pawns. And black played c6. Yeah, a very typical feature of the Pano variation here in the in this line is the knight on a5. It is, um, of course, somewhat offside. And uh, the fate of this knight usually decides the game. If black manages to make, uh, to make some sense out of this knight, then uh, <laughs> he normally is at least okay. If black somehow does not manage to make sense out of the piece, then white is uh, usually better. Because, um, yeah, well, there is this old rule. If one piece is bad, the whole position is bad. That um, is maybe exaggerating a bit, but um, yeah, it's not so far off. Aronian played that fd4. This is, in fact, a novelty in, in a couple of games, or two games, knight e to d4 was played, the other knight. It's a um, slight difference, of course, and I like the move, like knight fd4. It um, tries to provoke um, a commitment of the c-pawn. Black also could have played c5. He took, he took on d5. He could have played c5, which is interesting, simply for the fact um, that it, um, yeah, it addresses the a5 knight. The problem is if white wants to play, um, yeah, if white wants to avoid knight b3 exchanging it, he would need to go to f3, but after that, black has at least the b3 move here. Yeah? That, in fact, makes some sense out of the knight. Uh, like takes, knight takes, and black gets um, this bishop. So maybe white will even play here. And then you can exchange it. The only issue about this position is it's not clear to me that black is really okay. You have uh, gotten rid of this uh, this knight, but in the process you've given white the half open a file. There's always the a pawn to worry about. You cannot easily uh, defend it. This is a weakness. And white, um, yeah, of course, has some space advantage in the center. It's a Benoni structure after all. And if white is given some time, he will certainly start the steamroller. It's not uh, happening immediately. You need to prepare it. But I'm not so I'm not so positive about black's play here. And um, I think what Nakamura did was okay. He took on d5, but now he played queen c7, and I don't really like that one. It's of course very easy to to say after looking at the game. It seems that uh, e5 is um, the better way to get counterplay. In fact, this is similar to the game, but um, queen c7 is not such a positive move. Here, the main problem is, what is white's next move? He really would love to play b3, bishop b2, completing his development. And um, the thing is that now b3 is not so great after e5. Knight f3, for instance, bishop f5. And black can even think of returning the knight in the near future. Here, black seems uh, perfectly all right. He gets very active pieces. 
So after this, it's not so clear what white should do here. As e5 is an idea anyway, moving the knight or chasing the knight away and then bishop f5. Maybe this is the solution in this position, it's possible. Uh, queen c7 has a drawback and we see this after b3. Now, uh, now he played e5 and I think he maybe really should play this move. It looks weakening, I know, but I don't think you can afford to play uh, any slow stuff. If you play um, some move like, um, yeah. first of all, note that this is not great because of knight c6. Oh, well, here can take. Yeah, probably, probably a3 is even better. Yeah, that's even better. What I was trying to say is if black plays slowly, let, let's start with that move, for instance, opening up the, the bishop uh, diagonal. White just develops bishop uh, b2 and then something like rook e1, knight f4. And at the end, the weak e-pawn will be a problem. White even can play a quick h-pawn push. It's, uh, this, is, this is a very bad position, but uh, okay, for a good player, this is quite apparent. You need to do something here, black, not uh, play any slow move. E5 is what he did. And oops, oh, this was a bit too quick. And now A3. The thing is, this B3 move really has, white, uh, has helped uh, white a lot. The inclusion of queen c7 and b3 was clearly to white's advantage because now a3 is just very strong. Black has a hard time now to, uh, to keep this pawn. He needs to take. And now the important point is that white um, did not recapture but played bishop d2. And maybe this is what Nakamura underestimated. It's, I can only speculate here. The big problem is that now white is going to capture on a3 with the rook and in the meantime he threatens to take on a5. Let's say e5 for example, white takes and now gets this knight fork in, winning. This is why black basically needs to retreat the knight and now after rook takes, white just has an excellent position. He's got two pawn islands, while black is four, um, sorry, three, <laughs> three. But um, in addition, it's three pawn islands, but this is just permanently weak. And um, also, of course, the a pawn. This is already very tricky to play for black. Played e5, and of course, white is entering on c6. Rook a8. And knight b4. Yeah, the knight looks nice on c6, but this is also a nice square. Played a5 and queen a2. Yeah, here maybe knight d5 was a bit more precise. It's possible. After queen e2, a2, maybe um, Nakamura should have played bishop e6 here, getting more control over the d5 square. It's still um, a very nice position for white. But I think in the game, after bishop f5, knight d5, takes, Check. very much forced, and then b4. I think it's even worse. Here we see that um, the a-pawn might uh, become the decisive factor. If white is um, able to, to capture on a5 under favorable circumstances, the combination of this bishop and the pawn will be um, a big problem. He took on a3. And now rook to b1. Yeah, and now black has this problem. White is threatening to take. He played um, bishop f5 back. And now rook b2. Yeah, here bishop d7 was played. It was, um, I think, in this position. I need to check my notes here. Was it this position? Yeah, in this position. Here, here was an interesting, an interesting spot. Um, the computer has an interesting suggestion here. It wants to play queen c8, which um, at first looks uh, a bit strange, 
but um, it has an interesting idea. And the idea is, if white now takes on a5, which looks like an absolutely uh, normal move, at first you think, oh, isn't white winning? Black has a very good reply. He has got knight c5. And this is not so easy to spot for a human. If you look at this, taking the exchange, you, um, yeah, at first might have some doubts if this is the best for white. And if you look at more detail, you see that black is actually already um, the one calling the shots. Knight d3, bishop h3. This is not fun at all. The best line, according to the computer, is a6, knight d3, rook b7, knight f2. And um, it already is very, very tricky for white. It seems that c5, for some reason, <laughs> is a draw. <laughs> don't tell me why. Oh, don't, don't ask me why. <laughs> I would like to know, but uh, it's... Um, it's a very strange uh, position. What I'm getting at is that this is surprisingly tough defense. So does this mean that queen c8 is a solution to black's problems? In fact, it isn't. White has a strong move, c5. Yeah, And this is a move that you can, I think, only really spot if you have seen knight c5, because after d takes, white takes, and we have a comparable position, yeah, but without the square c5 available. And this means that white keeps his uh, advantage. The a-pawn is just very strong. Knight d6, for example, again, trying to give up the exchange, but white can ignore it. He can play a move like rook b6, for example. And um, yeah, this will continue. White is uh, better. The computer is actually giving white a very big advantage. But um, it's not uh, completely easy to play, and I can. I'm pretty sure that um, human players have their difficulties in this position. So uh, Queen C8 was an interesting try. Bishop D7 was played instead, and now B takes. And now the big difference is, if Black now tries to um, to give up the exchange. You need to take with the rook and not with the queen. And you don't have the queen now near the king on, on this light squares. So that a6 is just um, securing white's win. Yeah, a7 coming. This is um, pretty much lost. Bishop c6 was played. And knight c3. Yeah, White has um, excellent play on the queen side. Knight c5 and bishop e3. Yeah, after e4, white absolutely does not mind to give up an exchange. He's just playing a6. And here playing rook, uh, rook to b7. This is very strong. It's not uh, difficult to find, but still very strong. It gives up the exchange. He didn't take it even. But if you look at this position here, something like that. This is just not defensible. The combination of, uh, yeah, I'm drawing this really, really wrong. The combination of knight b5, queen a8, bishop a7 is decisive. Absolutely no chance for black. He, he's got zero counterplay. He, um, he didn't take it, played uh, queen c8, and uh, now Aronia took on e4. Yeah, white now is, is really totally winning. And um, after this capture and queen g4, he could just take on d3 for an exchange and now went back to b3. The a-pawn is, is just, uh, just the winner here. Note that this bishop on e3 is keeping the whole king side together. Queen takes, queen e2, covering this pawn and preparing a7. Queen c6, yeah, and here there's uh, there's more than one win. He played a7, simple and strong, and now d5. Yeah, and um, here um, Nakam um, Nakamura allowed an, an instant winner. I mean, White was winning anyway, 
but um, now rook g7 was played and this is just um, just finishing the game off really quickly I think the computer already gives a mate huh? <laughs> king takes check bishop d4 check king h6 yeah you need to go there if you um, go to um, g8 there's queen e7 coming check that's a bit too much So you need to go to h6. Check. Check here. If you go g5, there is um, at least rook b6. But uh, g4 is also quite nice. Threatening mate in two. Yeah, this is, um, cannot defend that actually. <laughs> okay. So we went uh, king h5 and now Check. g4 seals the deal. It's made in five moves now. King to h4. Check. 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 Another check. Check. Rook f3. Yeah, and um, faced with the prospect of uh, king g5. Check. Check here. And check. queen mate. g4 mate. Nakamura resigned. So uh, Nakamura losing the second game in a row after the really devastating loss yesterday. It's no surprise that he lost again. To be honest, it's uh, psychologically very difficult to, to lose such a game. and um, But also give very big credit to Aronia and he played an excellent game. You clearly cannot pinpoint a mistake uh, on white side. If you um, look at it with uh, a super strong engine, it points out some slight, slightly inaccurate moves, but this is really minor. An excellent game. And we see in the tournament standings, uh, I think it's pretty clear. Um, it's a pretty clear display of the current state of um, the chess top rankings as Carlsen is leading with an enormous score, three and a half out of four, and Aronia right after that with three out of four. And uh, all other players have a minus score, at least minus one, even minus two. So um, really the world number one and world number two places are really um, yeah, uncontested, let's say. No one is going to doubt that uh, Carlsen is the number one and Aronia the number two. Um, very strong play by both, uh, by both players. Yeah, well, tomorrow we have the, the final round and um, let's see what, what happens. Aronia certainly um, can try for, for another win. I'm not sure who is playing. Is he playing? We're playing Caruana. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I only know that uh, Carlsen uh, needs to play against uh, against Arnold. Yeah, well, let's uh, hope for yet another good round tomorrow. This was very good, very good chess. Very good and interesting chess. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it as well. Bye.